So Drew Holiday was able to secure a four-year extension with the Boston Celtics. And for the Milwaukee Bucks, it really puts them in a conundrum here because they really got to ask themselves, what was the opportunity cost for getting Dame? Because either way you look at this, it's almost a lose-lose. In a way that Dame trade definitely secured Giannis's place on the team as he quickly signed the extension right after that. But the Blazers turning around flipping Drew Holiday right back to their rivals. Right back to their rivals is really a blow. These teams in the past, I would say seven years, have been around the same timeline. Trying to one-up each other. The Bucks in 2020 sending three first-round picks to get Drew. And the Boston Celtics able to put themselves in a position where they could just send a second-round pick in the contracts of Isaiah Thomas for Kyrie Irving. So these two teams have always been jockeying for position to one-up each other in order to take control of the conference. But the Damian Lillard trade for the Bucks has led to a lot of opportunity costs that if you don't look underneath the surface, you could end up missing. And it's not just about the Celtics getting better. For starters, after the acquisition of Drew Holiday and now the extension, the Celtics now have flexibility to add additional salary in pretty much the last season before the new CBA kicks in. Because starting next summer, it's going to get harder for teams that have a lot of players on salary, very similar to the Celtics, to add additional salary. So that Damian Lillard trade triggering that opportunity to get Drew Holiday was really like taking two L's for the Milwaukee Bucks. Because of the contracts already on their books with Giannis, Dame, Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis. It already puts them in luxury tax territory, and I'm only naming five players. But unlike the Celtics, the Bucks bench is not only depleted, but some of their main core guys are in their mid-30s. And when you look at the Celtics, yes, they're going to be in luxury tax hell for the going future. But with the Drew Holiday extension, they were able to save on salary for next season with him ducking that $39 million play option he had and taking a lesser amount for that current year and then his contract will continue climbing up the more years go by. So the Drew Holiday pickup gave him enough flexibility to dance around the cap, especially when Jalen Brown's contract kicks in. They'll have just enough room to avoid the liability of the repeater tax. This kind of gets complicated, but regardless, the Drew Holiday situation leaves the Celtics with enough room to add flexibility to almost in a way future date them paying over two to three hundred million dollars in luxury tax they got a little breathing space with that trade along with the extension remember like i said before this was the final season where teams can add additional salary without the limitations that's going to come along for the summer off season of 2024 so in a way yeah the bucks did benefit with the dame trade addressing a lot of their shooting issues especially during crunch time. But now some of the opportunity cost is bleeding through the surface if they don't pay attention. And a perfect example of some of the opportunity costs I'm making reference to is the Philadelphia 76ers in 2019 when they had lost in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Toronto Raptors. The proper move right then and there would have been to trade Ben Simmons. But the opportunity cost of them not doing that is them losing Jimmy Butler who would eventually lead a Miami Heat team that had half the talent of the Philadelphia 76ers to two NBA Finals in three seasons. That's what the 76ers missed out on. And you could also say to a degree, they probably would have never renewed Tobias Harris. They just would have stuck with Jimmy and used that extra money to possibly obtain through trade or free agency another high-profile player. So that's another aspect of the opportunity cost that they missed on. But I gotta say, the Celtics worked this deal out really lovely because giving Drew a player option in that last year, especially with the cap going up, if Drew is still a valuable player, he has a way to opt out and possibly get more money, while at the same time, he's giving them flexibility to absorb the contracts of Jason Tatum as well as Jalen Brown. And also, we gotta add to that Derek White, who's gonna be up for a brand new contract in 2025-26. So you see the way Drew's contract is constructed, where it starts off slow and then climbs up, it helps the Celtics kind of dip into the second apron of the luxury tax and just having the possibility to dip out of it to avoid the repeater tax. But either way, there's a lot of repercussions for the Bucks making the trade for Dame because not only they give up their 2029 first round pick, 
but now they don't have one until 2031. But with the signing of Kristaps Porzingis, I don't think they've foreseen the Celtics even possibly making a deal for Drew Holiday because they're going to be on the hook for about a 200 to 300 million dollar luxury tax bill. But the way Drew constructed his contract, it delays it by a year. But again, this is the final season when you could add money to the books with a lot more flexibility than if you try to do so in the summer of 2024. And adding money to the books right now is very important for some of these teams because once you dip into that $190 million threshold for your team salary, the limitations are unreal. It's beyond just paying the luxury tax. Teams become very limited on how they could acquire new players. They're pretty much stuck into giving guys minimum contracts. No mid-level exceptions for brand new signees or for trades. And let's just say something happens in the future. They want to trade Damian Lillard. They can only trade Dame for someone who matches his deal. Almost to the exact T. So this is where the Bucks kind of find themselves in a conundrum. Not only not having draft picks until 2031, but also becoming very limited as their core players eat up about $162 million of their salary cap. So at the end of it, they only have about under $30 million to spread across 10 players to fill up that roster. And those of you watching the visual version, as you can see in 2026 and 27, just the contracts of Giannis and Damian Lillard alone already puts them at the $141 million mark. Once again, once a team's salary cap approaches past 190, you become limited on the kinds of trades you can make. So those contracts are not going to be easy to move. But for the Celtics, in a way, they're going to face the same conundrums going into the future. But the good thing for them is that they already kind of have their role players and most of their core guys are in their prime years. And pretty much the only guy that's really going to fall off the books is Al Horford. But this team does have their core players hitting the prime years. And that's the main difference between them and the Bucks. So overall, with this new CBA coming in, the opportunity cost for the Bucks to make that Damian Lillard trade, it was a lot more than just the two first round picks they gave up. They made their fellow Eastern Conference rival a lot stronger, and they pretty much began to tie restraints to themselves of improving their roster year in, year out, going forward into this new CBA. But there's no doubt in my mind that them pulling the move for Dame was also to please Giannis, because once that transaction was made, not only the owner sold the team, but then Giannis signed the extension. So there was a lot going on behind the scenes in Milwaukee. And this is really a trend we see throughout the league where the current people in power don't really care too much to look into the future because maybe certain executives and players won't be around anymore. But this is going to be a very tricky dance going forward that the Bucks are going to have to make in order to improve this roster. But for Drew Holiday, I definitely got to say, he's got one hell of an agent to get three separate deals for over $130 million throughout his NBA career for being a fringe tier two to tier three player. It's definitely kudos to his agent. 